Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you how I can fix your car using this 99 cent tool instead of this $5,000 computer. And yes, this all has to do with computer systems on cars. Because it's come to my attention, a lot of people no longer fix the cars correctly. They do not do the final aspect of car repair with computers that should always be done. Now for a long time cars have used these ECM, the electronic control modules, to run just about everything. If you got a problem, they can trip codes, you fix it, and you gotta reset the computer. People often do this incorrectly. Now any plain old scan tool can be plugged into under the dash. There's the data link connector port. They only go on one way. You can plug it in. Here's it to a race code. You push a race, and with the key on, but the engine not running, you push a race DTCs, and it erases them. But that doesn't erase everything. Often it just does the generic stuff. Now, my fancy think tool here, yeah, it erases everything. But it's a $5,000 tool. It sure does amazing things for a professional mechanic like myself. But you're not going to go out and buy one of these things. If you have a problem in your car and you replace the sensor and you got to reset things, you're going to buy this $5,000 tool. I don't think so. But would you buy this one ohm 10 watt resistor? You probably would if you knew what the heck to do with it. Well, I'm gonna show you. You wanna learn how to reset stuff yourself. It's not hard to do. And even mechanics half the time, they don't do it right. I have had so many cars come over here in the last year that they were either buying them used or they bought them. And when I plugged in my fancy scan tool, it would show 56 codes, 37 codes. And you'd think, hey, the car's a junker. Well, most of them weren't junkers. It was that in the past, they had repairs done. Some of these cars had 200, 300,000 miles. And they had repairs done in the past. And the guys that worked on them either did not have the knowledge of how to correctly reset them. They probably thought they could put their cheap scan tool in and it would reset everything. No, it doesn't. It just does the generic stuff. Or they didn't even bother. I had a customer had a Mercedes. Took it in for warranty work to replace a part. They did. He brought it to me. I plugged in my Think Car tool and it said, oh, that code still exists. So I checked it out with my $5,000 scan tool and saw the system was working okay, but the idiots at the Mercedes dealer didn't reset it. They replaced the part and they didn't bother to reset it. Warranty work, you often see that kind of crap. They're not getting paid much, they don't care. I'm gonna show you how simple it is to reset your car's computer the right way so you don't damage anything. And if you've had an odd glitch in your car, sometimes resetting your computer can even fix it. Back in the day, decades ago, people would just say, well, I'll just unplug my car's battery, wait five minutes, plug it back in, that resets stuff and away you go. And that worked perfectly fine on old cars like my 94 or Celica, but modern cars have so many computer modules, some have over a hundred separate computer modules. And here's the way to reset the stupid things correct and without having to buy a $5,000 scan tool. You can certainly afford to buy a 99 cent resistor. Just be sure in this case you get the right resistor. A 10 watt, one ohm resistor. That's plenty good enough for our purposes. Just get a ratchet, in this case it's Lexus, so it's 10 millimeter socket. Then remove both battery terminals. Sometimes they stick and you gotta wiggle. Been on there a long time. Well, it still won't come off. So in this case, I like vice grip pliers. What you do is put them on the top here. You can adjust it so it fits right. You get it nice and tight. Snap it on. Uh, then you can wiggle it and pull and off it comes. It wasn't as bad as you thought. Then take the negative side off. They're usually easier. Wiggle this. It came off by itself. You want to drain all the energy out of all the modules. They have capacitors and stuff in them that can hold electricity. And in the olden days, we used to just hold the positive and negative cable together. But ah, uh, you don't want to do that on a modern car. It can damage the computer. We'll take this apart and show you. We'll take the rest of the screws out. Heck, it's too hard with gloves. And voila, look at the inside, delicate electronics. If you touch the two cables together, once you take them off the battery, to drain all the system out, 
it can drain so fast that you can get voltage spikes inside the computer modules and it can destroy things and like i said some cars these days have a hundred different modules you could destroy a lot of stuff so here's how to do it correctly you won't destroy anything and it will erase all of the memory and it'll go back to the factory setting you get your resistor okay you put one end on a negative terminal went in on a positive terminal and let it drain for oh say 10-15 minutes and if you're lazy like me get two jumper cables with little clips on the end and connect it that way then you can do something useful instead of standing there for 15 minutes waiting for everything to drain now this is a big deal to do this because like I said if you just connect them together it's going to drain real fast it can spike the voltage and it can mess things up this will not mess up anything that resistor gives it enough resistance so that there's no spikes and it will just gradually drain all the capacitors in all of your computer modules because let's face it these computers are very complex inside you don't want to take a chance at ruining them. all modern cars when you buy the computer it's got to be reprogrammed with the programming for your model. Also has to be reprogrammed for the computer chip and your anti theft key or your keyless ignition system. All that stuff runs through the computer. You got to reprogram it all. You don't want to mess up a computer just because you touched the cables together and it got a voltage surge. Now, of course, I'm a very lazy man. I call it intelligence. You see, intelligent people work less and think more. Well, I just use my think tool and push erase all codes and it erases them all, right? So, it's no problem for me. But are you really going to buy this $5,000 tool to do it on your own car? But certainly, you're not going to balk at buying a 99-cent resistor. Now, you don't have to buy the jumper cables you can stand there if you're really cheap and just hold these here and touch that on each end but i mean really jumper wires are handy for all kinds of stuff now it may seem like a simple tip but i've seen hundreds of mechanics skip this step not erase all the codes then it makes repair down the line bad and in some cases cars still won't run right because they have a hard code set that wasn't erased it still thinks there's a problem just realize with all this computer technology inside your control module or PCM. Some people call them PCM for power to control module. It's the same stupid thing. They just give them a different name. These things have a lot of memory. They tend to never forget anything. When you do what I just did, it makes them forget everything that they've learned and they go back to their factory settings. And I've had guys that are working on their own cars and they're doing pretty good work and they change parts and they say, Scotty, can you help me out? I changed the part and it's still on and it says, permanent code they tried to erase it with their little scan tool but it keeps coming up permanent code and it won't go away well if you fix the problem by replacing the sensor or whatever was wrong it may not be a permanent code the computer just thinks it is use one of these little resistors like i just showed you and it will go back to the factory setting and you'll probably find it doesn't have the permanent code anymore and don't freak out with many modern cars when you're done doing this and you take everything off, and put the terminals back on, put the positive on first, then tighten it up. Get it nice and snug, and put the negative one back on, get it nice and tight. That once you do this, you might have to reset your radio stations and your clock. And in some cars, especially Toyotas, they'll idle a little bit odd for a few days or maybe a few hours because it's got to relearn to idle you might see it shaking a little bit too much at idle just drive it around it'll reset itself it'll get used to driving after a while system i just showed you safely erases everything but it doesn't do any damage just remember the old trick where you just take the cables off and put them together don't do it in a modern car there are so many modules that can be ruined if you don't do that you could fry them and these modules are super expensive but you got to reprogram them to make them work in a car so then you got to pay a mechanic like me to get the software to reprogram them yada yada it's a pain in the butt you can just bypass all that problem buying this 99 cent resistor simple thing to do so do it the next time you get a permanent code or maybe you just want to reset your car's computer sometimes they just get a little off just like at home where what do you do you unplug your computer for a while and then turn it back on again and back in the day 
Now you really can't do it because most are sealed, but back in the day, you'd have a laptop, it had an internal lithium ion battery that you could easily access. And in those, you would actually take the battery out too. You'd unplug it from the wall, but you took the battery out too so that it would actually get all the crap out of your computer and then put it all back together again. This is basically resetting your car's computer using a 99 cent part. So now you know how to correctly reset a car's computer without doing any hidden damage because you may not be able to see electricity, but if you watch my videos, at least you'll be able to understand how it works so you don't do any damage to your car. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.